is progressive work and what kind of, of centralization and reflection of ruling practices. And of course, you have to answer these questions every day when you need some kind of, of conflict. And uh, of course, uh, just sometimes you raise a question that that this state is is is, uh, is never to defend a country because state is such is a fund uh, and and then uh, maybe even if the state has an army, uh, it doesn't have to defend the country in, in, in case of, of conflict. But in this case, I, I want to cite the uh, Robert again, and he said that uh, in, concerning this kind of discussion, he said that the libertarian should say, in effect, the state. Uh, all right, you exist, but as long as you exist, at least you find your fit to the area which you are monopolized. It actually means that progress again is in favor of if the state is already existing and the army is already existing, you need to import that army in case of in case of war. Uh, some remarks about political bullying. Uh, everyone has an image of a bully. Of course, I am also one. It, of course, I think libertarians who this is really in, in, our, in our state or in our government, and that's also the truth. But, but, but of course, we have some image of foreign bully as well, or very often, or especially being from smaller states. It is not really such a case in the United States, but it's definitely a case in, in, in Central Europe. But of course, the, 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 the more interesting question is how we define a bully. Uh, because, because it's not, not always an easy question. And, I, I, I want to cite over the definition of bullying at school. It's a bit different, but this reflects the uh, outer. And bullying involves desire and courage, personal action, a power imbalance, typical repetition, and a just use of power, and evident performance by the aggressor, uh, and a sense of being oppressed on the part of the victim. So these are the general description of bullying, which is I think quite good, but it's also our, our topic as well. Uh, but when we turn to practicalities of international policy, well, we, we, it's very difficult, as I said, to distinguish what, what is bullying. I will make some examples that I was just saying, uh, some examples to illustrate that. For example, Armenia and Azerbaijan conflict concerning Mumbai. Uh, who is bullied and uh, who is not? And, uh, or, U.S. Uh, wars against country X against okay, some country. Of course, it's very difficult to define who is really one and who is not. Or, for example, uh, the Kurdistan question and or Iraq, Kurdistan, Turkey question. We had some 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 reflections on this on this yesterday. Who is bullied? And we saw examples that everyone is is, is bullied. Or, for example, uh, uh, Russia and Georgia in case of Abkhazia. What is the point of the for 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 foreigners for stationers? Is it a socialist state or is it kind of reflection of, of Russian bullying in case of war? Or Israel Palestine or Israel Arab world conflict? Is what, 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 what is that? And again, as Robert says, uh, there are always uh, the difficulties spotting the real aggressor in any particular war when both sides are are armed camps. Uh, when there are many provocations, secret changes, deals, and frontier incidents, the question of undergoing the actual start of the war, let alone who is it more or less wrong, becomes a matter of the careful research of huge historians. It's not a simple question. And of course, I have to admit also that the usual the bullies inside the country, and this is a nasty picture. This one is from Romania, that's quite quite, quite typical for many, many countries about how how their governments are expelling. People and killing them, and according to a rumor about, as you know, about 170 million people were killed during the 19th century, 20th century by their governments. And according to other estimations, there are 262 uh, million people killed by, by their governments in the uh, 20th century. Uh, but let me turn to another question Is this bullying already always wrong? And, uh, for example, there was a case two years ago concerning Russia and Ukraine conflict concerning gas gas supply. It was treated as an eye opener case for Western world, uh, showing how Russia uses energy to as as geopolitical tool. But I think I think that is that was a bit wrong because actually what happened there was a negotiation concerning price, and Russia was was to charge market price because it was very catchy with energy inflation. But of course, it's not beneficial to the people of, of, of Russia to, 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 to use energy to like buying other neighbors. But of course, it's not 
the symphonic, or let's take another example. We think we have there a public scene, and there's recent, recent discussion in the second or three years already. It's a, a project for gas, gas pipeline from Russia to Germany. And actually, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland are very much opposing the gas pipeline because they are not going through their countries. And of course, it means that all those countries will not have an instrument to press Russia in, you know, in some cases, instance. And actually, if you look carefully into some, some, some aspects of, of, of the political life, you can see this, there's some anti Russian anti between Poland and Lithuania. And all, all, almost all chances comes through Lithuania. And actually, Lithuania was using it as a tool against Russia. And what, 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 what is that? It's not only even small, small relative free state against big, big and free state may be a bully in, in some cases. So, bully or bad guy is not always wrong, or not bully or good guy is not always right. Or we can say that all states are bullying around if they only have a spirit to do it. And now let, let me go to the strategies of how to deal with, with uh, bullying here. And of course, there are, there are uh, some, some strategies like fighting or resisting in case of conflicts, allying or having a strong friend, obeying or buying out so you are your freedom, collaborating with the republic, uh, or, or the last one, which is quite untypical, but I would like to suggest being open to foreign investment, which I think is very essential. But before going into details, let me, let me again uh, speak about some. some some fallacies uh, concerning this. Uh, one is that, uh, you know, it's usual to cheat that it's small is always weak. But in fact, it's not true, and, and, and uh, of course, the history of also proved this, starting with the fact that all big nations once were small nations, and uh, the fact that you know, during the world wars, uh, small nations do survive. And actually, as Fulton Mises points out, there is usually help come, coming from, from abroad. For small states, uh, because of different reasons, and small states are not there. Prospects for small states are not necessarily so bad uh, in contrary to what is popular belief. And uh, uh, I think in this case, we have a in front of, of successful examples of surviving of small states. Uh, another, another notion which is wrong, I think, is that the free means to be, uh, because uh, it's usual to think that you know, if you have a free, prosperous country, it means that. It has very, very little uh, centralized military power that is a uh, strong human neighbor. And if you look at that, well, this big country may be, may be occupied by easily because there's no army to resist. But in fact, it is not, not, not true. In fact, it, uh, there's, in, in the press, you see more, more pictures like this when the strong, strong bully is, is weak, but not, not small state. But uh, just to turn to uh, you know, the older uh, the, the authors, even Machiavelli argues that, uh, uh, that small states are strong and sometimes even dangerous to other states. But small and free states are strong and, and sometimes even dangerous to other states. And he, he points out that the free nations are more prosperous, and that's that they are. They are more political stable, and that's part of the field uh, for tertiary. There is high war among their citizens that's making them better soldiers or members of the country. And people of opportunity and free competition among citizens tend to reward and thus foster efficiency in, in, in free states. And the highest standard of living enjoyed by free nations tend to have an increase in population, their state, and get expanded in the territory of their neighbors. So that's the really opposite, opposite argument, which I mean, are quite reasonable ones. But of course, these are uh, historical arguments, and you may have very different situations. And in fact, when Historian Charles Studi, right? He says about when wars do occur. And he says that the central tragic fact is simple coercion works. Those who apply substantial force to their fellows get compliance. And from that compliance, well, no good advantage of money, goods, deference, access to pleasures, and that's less powerful people. And actually, it works. And of course, like, bullying is sometimes a good, good strategy, the same as for directors in, 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 in the case of. of uh, Against business people, for example. And one more interesting thing is that the same thing with the historical analysis also showed that coercion and capital are constrained in the genesis of states uh, and, and wars, and uh, or successful states and wars. Uh, it may be a coercion in the first place, which is like capital, and then get stronger and stronger, or it may be capital first, which actually finances some 
some some some bullets in order to to kill the specific drop drop the body. Then so that that's all what happened. In fact, sometimes we can talk about it doesn't matter what because because in Israel we see that they can conquer such as those who are conquered. And for example, if you uh uh exact thing on the road of the case, I don't say when they just uh feeling used to the level of trans and in being those that still like or the it is often like all sorts of numbers. So in the conquer it's gonna be built to that sort of photo uh uh, you know, general strategies of the and they all are inside what you is not So, therefore, this is not a passive policy. We do not hold the and this is the But we see the of the What is the The difference is the the and in case of urgent design, the process of the whole thing on the action is to be this is for the whole process of the public building members out there. If you look at the basic process of the design, the examples and the other side of the design, and then the type of sessions and the final call of some of the same, but also the process that the technology is based on the floor of the station. The one for the business, but you will have some skills for the And then this is just one sign of the issue. And if you want to see that, also the problems that you can draw through, that's what I want to draw through, and you can draw through this. Because this is kind of a personal skill, I'll just call it a thing with the family, with the chief sanction. And I think that people are very interested in the end of the house also directly. Army, and the army was quite heavily financed. 
But in World War II, of course, all the arms were seized by Russians and used against the Ukrainians afterwards. But the, the, the next picture is the Ukrainian partisans of the guerrilla fighters after World War II. And of course, guns are completely different than those that were financed with taxpayers' money before World War II. These were guns that seemed to get thrown uh, as a militia groups or seized from an enemy. But these were completely different guns. It didn't help at all. But the thing about the relative success of the and first of all, it's about this diversification process, which was also uh, in the rule that you saw the people of history. Uh, in the area, we have about 10% of, of people immigrated from, from, from the Soviet Union. In Estonia, uh, at the moment, we have about 35%, and in Latvia, we have about 45%. So the difference is quite huge. And the Fiorina had even disadvantaged the situation concerning this because almost one third of the Fiorina's territory was depopulated after World War II because the Fiorina got back buildings from another big power, Poland, after World War II, and then about 300 Jews were killed and then many Poles uh, left, left this territory. And we got the uh, Lebedo, a major region, which again, the Fiorina's and Germans actually left the, 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 the country. And these were the populated areas. So it looked like a little community for newcomers just to come and settle, etc. But actually, there were two strategies which worked in this case. The first one was uh, very intensive guerrilla work, which was even more intense in Ukraine than in Latin Estonia. And, uh, and there was, again, some accidents which created an atmosphere or an image that is very unsafe for uh, Soviets. A model Soviet man to go to, go to Ukraine because there was a skill that he would be killed. But that, that's it. So in small cities and villages, there were no possibility for newcomers to come because of the resistance. Uh, and resistance, you about numbers of resistance. Uh, there in, in one year, like 45, there were about from 30,000 to 100,000 of, of, of the Canadian fighters in the forest, in the forest brothers. And actually, it was reported that, you know, sometimes the, the chiefs of the, of the units actually send soldiers home uh, as a reserve because, you know, there was no fighters. So, so it means that actually all nation was, 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 was fighting against, against Russian invasion, especially right after the World War II. And then another strategy in sending this invasion is completely different. It, means it was collaboration of the Ukrainians with Russians. Because the participation of the Ukrainians in the Ukrainian Communist Party was much, much higher than the participation of Latvians or Estonians in their communist parties. And it meant that uh, the they had stronger power and they had the ability to manipulate or play double games. And in the case of industrialization, it was able to, to send a Ukrainian presence to the those new, new, new industry zone, but, but not to invite newcomers from other, other countries. So this, this is this for quite, for quite a brilliant achievement if, 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 if you compare. And this offers again some, some of these two tactics how, how to deal in, in such a uh, difficult uh, situation. Uh, of course, uh, there is, there is a possibility to have a strong friend in the life. And that, that's, I think, is very important. And for example, in the case of Kuwait, it worked really well. Because you know, you, you know, Kuwait tends to have free riders, and then the US soldiers fought for the independence. And that, that, that was great for Kuwait people. It was not maybe so great for, for US taxpayers, but it was great for Kuwait people. So why not put the, the, the free ride and have this? This strong ally. And of course, allying with the one neighbors or small free neighbors is also very important. And for example, in the case of Lithuania, it's well established fact that Russian secret services were paying Lithuanian national ruling party before World War II in order to keep the conflicts between Lithuania and Poland alive. Because they didn't want Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia to make an alliance against possible threats from, from Russia. And was successful. And in fact, and if we had this kind of alliance, maybe the, the outcome of this would be quite, quite different. Uh, of course, obeying a body, obeying a body is again quite, quite a tactic. And then just uh, also, we, we have an example of Kurds who, who are kind of deciding who will defend them. And in fact, this was uh, quite, quite a, a normal example in, 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 in ancient times. And for example, well, there's no recorded the actions of, of other uh, citizens uh, who actually were choosing defenders very often and switch them, uh, switch them quite, quite often. And uh, yeah, sometimes it, it, there's a joke that some citizens are never conquered because citizens of all those cities were in Donald's uh, home brigade and handed the people of, of the city to, to the occupiers. And, and sometimes it is a viable solution if you are not, if there's not a good win, of course, you have some problems. Deal with this problem. 
And during the, the wartime, it was usual also during the ages that it somehow during also uh, the uh, the actions of aggressive and in conquered territories depending very much on how victim acted before. It means if they surrendered before, before even the siege of the city, for example, so everything was left, left as it was. If they surrendered after the siege, so the citizens were left to go, go out of the city with what they can carry on. And that was it. And if they were fighting in the end, all of them were killed. So that, that was a good thing. So of course you have to calculate the end. Of course, it creates it creates huge incentives to go around if, if you just call that everyone's calculating. But anyway, this is quite an, quite an option. Uh, and tolerating the bullet or exploiting the bullet also, uh, that because in case of Ukraine and Russia, with this gas, they can't be receiving cheaper gas. Of course, it's quite a good, good deal, you know. You sell something, but, but you but also get, get something. The bullets are usually quite, quite stupid, you know, exploiting the own people and, and then sending some subsidies to, to abroad in order to buy out, you know, like uh, friendships for, from those countries. One more thing I want to stress is openness to investment. In Austrian economics, there is uh, there is a group of speak about how investment forces economic growth. And that's completely right. But in the case of some investment from a European country, uh, the question seems to be more complicated. It's like in the UK or other countries before, like investment from such, such companies as Gazprom, which is usually treated as it is, you know, why would you have to accept this investment from this country because they would make an influence on us? And that was quite reasonable argumentation, but in fact, it is completely true. Because if you look at the practical, practical you know, economics, economics of this, you may see that you know, usually small free countries is, is better place to make and show profits and use larger money in the case of, of managers of state run huge companies. And in fact, managers of the companies very often actually do so. It is very beneficial for them to invest at all and show profits and, and, and to take profits away somehow. And in the, then, of course, Abundance of investment of investment in different countries it creates mechanisms of checks and balances, including from different investment different world groups. And then if, if a small free country has investment from Putin, Putin in Abra, of course, of course, Putin in Abra has less incentives to attack a country or to use his money for okay against the country because first of all what comes comes its investments. For example, in energy is the, 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 the first example. If you let all the energy energy companies be bought out by, let's say, Russian companies, in this case, Russia would not be interested in in economic blockade, but not be not selling selling energy to this country. So this to be the contrary of what is usually usually doing. And one more thing is what not to be not to be done in, in case of, of small country. And uh, what not be done uh, is um, of course what not to be put into the into the market. Um, Markets into the, the, the actions of people because, first of all, it reduces possibilities to fight crime because huge arms are seized and possibilities to adapt to ever changing situation. Yes, this is uh, and, and uh, actually, the costs of conflict are uh, externalized. And in, 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 in the absence of internalization, there is no need for every, every, every citizen to, to think about how to adapt the situation and how to deal with it in this case when you have a living neighbor uh, nearby. Uh, and one more thing, very important one is uh, oh, that, 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 about this, that is a demonstration against NATO in Ukraine. And this, the, the, what, what they say is uh, natural gas is what we pay for NATO. And actually, this is, this is dry, but, but you can, this is a trade, trade off. This, this is a this wrong soldier in, in Estonia who was moved away from, from the place and then the, the riots and everything. I mean, uh, some people call it a soldier liberator, some people call it a monument to the unknown greatness. But let me elaborate a little bit about the about state, the goodness of state. If, if all, all places, all, all territories in Estonia would be private ones, and all effort would be private ones. So, of course, this monument would be in the place of some kind of owner. And of course, it would be for owner to decide whether to have this, this monument in this place or not to have it. But in this case, it was not the, the private for common place. And it meant that moving out this, this, this monument was a political decision. And of course, you know, for Bully, always more, more, more easy to, to do. 
go around if you have someone similar across the border, if you have some other political power. And but of course, of course, uh, if you if you simply not allow, do not have someone someone to do it in your level, you simply are not able, able to do it. So uh, uh, in many, many instances, I'm uh, very, very convinced that uh, there's, there's always conversation, a very good tool in order to avoid bullying. And especially in the case of this new fashionable gas or electricity or oil works or, or uh, energy as geopolitical tool. In case of private energy companies, you know, there's no politicians involved in, 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 in the process. And there's no possibility of pressing on, on, on energy issues in order to get something politically. Because, no, it's, 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 it's a fire. Or in case, for example, in the same representation in Baltic states, uh, usually less Russian people, uh, less, less Russian students are looking to attend Russian schools now. And there are decisions to close Russian schools. But of course, as schools are run by government, of course, it's a political decision. And as it's political decisions, all Marshi or other so called Russian patriots are able to say that you know, those politicians are closing uh, our Russian schools abroad, so they, they, are, they are bullying their own. But, but if we imagine a situation where all schools are pilots, you have fair play rules in, in, in this sector, so it means that you know, the Russian government would have been bullied. That would be a completely different situation. And, and one more argument is what, what to do yeah, or lessons, historical lessons. Some, some uh, observers they, they pay attention to the fact that in case when you have local dictator or authoritarian regime in a country, uh, it means that dictator tries everything to persuade people just to obey the government. And actually, for ordinary people, it's not a big deal whether you obey one government or another government. While in case of free nation, it is in the essence, in the blood of people that you know, I'm free. I'm free from my own government, and it means that I'm trying to keep my freedom in the case of, of possible aggression from abroad. So, this kind of centralization in order to protect country actually, in most cases, works uh, against, against the, the, the goal that we had been before. And uh, just uh, just look at the conclusion, uh, uh, I would say that. Uh, let's go. In case, in case, very, very often, often strategies, strategies to stand against strong bullying neighbor, been creating strong power, strong nuclear power inside the country is simply wrong. We have to have decentralized solutions in order to be successive in long run and sometimes in the short term. And the other aspect is that the only exception when military or centralized finance military would be employed is when this military was already created. But it's not a strategy, it's simply the uh, like use of, of the track of the existing 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 power. So that's my reflections on, on both of the small Thank you. This is great. <laughs>